Welcome to Journey On Conversations, a monthly webcast where we talk uh, with leaders and members of FFBC and beyond about what it means to pursue a Christ-centered life. My name is Kurt Maltanner. I'm the pastor of children. Uh, this month, uh, we will talk with Ed Barnes, who is the administrator at Pinnacle Retreat Center, and Ellen Jeffers, who is uh, serving as our kids camp director uh, currently. So please help me welcome Ed and Ellen to Journey On Conversations. Great to be here, Kurt. Good morning. Thanks. Thanks for joining me this morning. Uh, good to see your faces. Um, Ed, it's been been a couple of years uh, as, as our you know camp was uh, canceled last year uh, due to to the COVID. And um, but Ellen, we get the joy of seeing you uh, weekly, and uh, it's always a, a pleasure to talk with you and and also to um, spend time with you today we just want to have a conversation about uh kids camp and camp pinnacle and pinnacle retreat center and how god's using that uh to to further the kingdom um but first before we we get there let's uh ed will you tell us just a little bit about yourself and how you uh, got into ministry and 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 how god has directed your path uh, to where you are now well i felt a I would say in late late high school years, I started feeling a little bit of, of a tug towards ministry, and I didn't think I was a pastor. Um, I thought youth ministry because I, you know, less the fun and the you know the games and and those kind of things. And um, it was a strange turn of fate that um, um, I I uh, interviewed to work at a summer camp, which if I had followed my original plan after I graduated high school, I would have played soccer in college. And if I played soccer in college, I could not have worked at that camp. But I got injured. They wouldn't sign a release for me to play. With a bad attitude, I interviewed uh, to work at this camp. And then lo and behold, I was hired. And then while I was there, I found, I found what I think is my calling. And that's to camp and conference center ministry. And um, after, after college, I got a degree in recreation, which goes right in there with camp and conference center. Uh, from Georgia State, um, got married in um, August of 94 to my wonderful wife, Amy. We moved to Fort Worth to go to seminary at Southwestern Seminary, uh, graduated from there, and I've worked at a few camps and conference centers um, since then. And I have two kids. Uh, Andrew is 20 and a junior-ish at North Georgia, North Georgia in, uh, in Dahlonega. And my daughter is a high school senior at Raven County High School and is headed to Columbus State in the fall to play soccer. Awesome. For soccer. Awesome. Awesome. Quite, quite a journey. So, it has been. Uh, yes, yeah. That's great. Um, Ellen, tell us a little bit about, about you, about um, how God has directed you uh, into your current position as, as leading our, our kids camp and directing our kids camp. Um, and tell us a little bit about how long you've uh, been serving with camp and as director as well. Okay, I'll do it. Um, well, as far as um, before before kids camp, as far as Fayetteville First Baptist Church, I started attending Fayetteville First Baptist when I was um, the ripe age of four mm -hmm. with my family. And I may not need to tell exactly how many years that's been since there, but it's been the majority of my upbringing for sure. And um, through that, there are a lot of families that have been there a long time and a lot of families that are that are new over the years. And one in particular um, is the Arnold family. And um, and Becky uh, used to um, run this camp and um, and asked me long before I had children, won't you go to kids camp? Won't you go to kids camp? And I would have to say, you know. Becky, let me get there. Let me just get there with my kids. They were little, they're babies, they're hanging off the hip and um, time passed on and, um, and someone else that I greatly respect, Tanya Jones, ran camp for a while and I got to serve um, under her leadership there. Um, and so I think, let's see, I have four children. My oldest is 17. So I think it was 2011, I started attending camp as an adult counselor. Um, my oldest daughter was in this, just finished second grade. And then um, later, uh, Tanya asked me if I would consider being camp director. So Kurt, you'll have to help me, but I think it was the summer of 2016 that we started serving together. Does that sound about oh, that's right? right? 
So I believe so. If COVID hadn't trumped last year's camp, this would be year six, but it's technically year, year five. And, yeah. um, and I've got the, gotten the opportunity to serve alongside you and, and Ed with you and your staff and everybody just sort of feels like family. I felt like I had big shoes to fill that it would be a lot, but really it, um, it brings me great joy and, and is, is a pleasure to get to help coordinate camp alongside both of you. Um, as far as something a little more about me, my children, I mentioned I have four ranging from uh, 17. My oldest is a senior down to age six. Um, my, my little one is finishing first grade and he sure wishes that this was his summer to get to go to camp. But <laughs> since camp is uh, for completed second through sixth graders, he knows he's just got one more year and he's been counting. My husband also participates and in some of the crazy and um, and helps direct He's, our rec. And so we're, we're all there most of the time. <laughs> he he is the crazy, let's just, let's just be I honest. I would agree, right? but I was trying to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, it is a, a pleasure to serve with both of you in this, in this um, uh, capacity. And um, camp is truly one of uh, my favorite things to do with kids is to get away um, get disconnected from all the connections that they have um, when they're here and um, let them uh, connect with God and each other. Um, so, uh, but Ed, tell us a little bit more about Pinnacle uh, Retreat Center and, and what, how God uses that, you know, um, to, in the, in the discipleship process and, and what, you know, Pinnacle is, is part of um, the Georgia Baptist mission board is one of the retreat centers that's connected with our um georgia baptists and um so just tell us a little bit more about about the in, in 1947 the baptist women of georgia uh were searching they were searching for a location to host summer camp for girls uh, the idea was to have a um uh, on-site camp traditional activities canoeing archery those sorts of things and also have a mission emphasis and theme run throughout. And so um, this, this area, this land where we, where we currently are came available. It had been utilized by the Boy Scouts, <clears throat> excuse me, the Boy Scouts. Uh, they moved down the road a little bit and this area, this land set open, the ladies uh, found it and were able to purchase it for a dollar from the county. And since 1947, except for two two years. There was a construction project in around 1990 where they didn't have summer camp and then 2020. Um, except for those two years, since 47, they've run summer camp ever since. About 20, 25 years ago, there was an effort to um, revitalize the campus. Original facilities had grown in disrepair. Um, the ladies of the state uh, raised uh, lots, of, lots of funds and the building where the lodge is, uh, where I currently sit, was constructed with the idea that we would host year-round um, conferences and retreats. So churches, other 501c3 organizations, um, that sort of thing, we, we would be able to host them on campus for retreats and conferences. Uh, and then the, the cabins have been um, upgraded throughout time as well. The, the old cabins were torn down and new ones were, were put in. Well, I, I arrived uh, I was hired in, well, I began work in October of 2014. And, um, you know, for the first little while, you have to get your lay of the land. And then I worked with a crew um, um, from within Baptist, the Baptist women, and we developed a mission statement for Pinnacle that we, uh, that we use now as our, as our guide. And our mission statement is creating environments to encounter God, develop disciples, and impact the world for Christ. Um, uh, we, it is our hope, it is our desire, it is our prayer that every guest that enters our property will experience God in an amazing way. So it is our goal. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, sometimes the phone rings. I apologize. Okay, no, um, no problem. <laughs> it is our goal that when guests come, we will not have any distractions that we can prevent. So clean rooms, good food, uh, comfortable conference spaces, uh, no floods in the chapel, you know, these kind of things right. that, um, uh, that can be a distraction that should God choose to speak while the guest is here, 
that it's not our fault if the guest chooses not to listen. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is really our goal. And um, um, whether it's a first time encounter with God, which we're incredibly excited about those, or mm -hmm. someone who may have wandered away or somebody who just needs some rest and rejuvenation, uh, that's the kind of facility that we try to provide. Awesome. So, so you, you know, Pinnacle Retreat Center becomes more of a, of a, of a tool in a way for yes. churches and organizations to use. Um, and you help facilitate that and provide the environment, which, which would um, hopefully give people the best opportunity to enter, encounter God. And that's um, such an important thing. And, and that's what we've experienced um, as we've uh, done camps with you. I know there's been several, this is, Camp Pinnacle is the only camp that I've been to since since coming on staff um, but man I can say that you guys uh, have fulfilled that that mission that you you have um, every time that we've been there in providing um, that environment for our group and taking care of us in a way that um, allows us um, our, our leaders to minister to our kids and 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 for um, our kids to have the best opportunity to hear hear from God so uh, we really, really appreciate um, what's you know, that, um, I know sometimes we, we get caught up in numbers and, and things like that, but, and, you know, in the past, you know, several years, since you've, you've been on staff, uh, there and leading, um, at Pinnacle, what, what kind of, you know, I hate to say numbers, but, you know, what have you seen, how have you seen God work? And I know you tr tend to track, you know, how many people have, have made that decision to follow Christ for the first time, um, while they're with you or, or things like that. Can you share a little bit more about that? Yeah, about I, I don't, un, unfortunately, we don't always get those numbers because if right. a group is having a private retreat, they may not share those numbers with us. Right. Uh, even if we ask that information, they, they may not share it for whatever reason. That, that, that's okay. What I, what I can tell you is there, for instance, two, two weeks ago, uh, we had a group of ladies here um, um, for, for a retreat and I know for a fact that two ladies accepted Christ while they were here just just two weeks ago, um, which which that's that's amazing. You know, you know, the stats show that it's not adults that often make that first time decision. It's usually children or, you know, students. It's not it's not adults. But these these were adults that came um, were ministered to by that group. We got to serve them. Um, we had the opportunity to serve them, and then those ladies went away, changed, changed forever. So that's just a that's just a short testimony. I don't I don't have full numbers. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't have that. It's it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, and you know, we just we know that God's working there and using using the retreat center uh, to change lives, and we've seen that um, in our own kids camp. You know that we that we bring you know, almost every year uh, that we can. Ellen, um, tell us a little bit more uh, about our kids camp that we, we put on. Um, what, what is kids camp and, and why, why do we do kids camp? All right. So I mentioned before that we, uh, we offer kids camp to our completed second grade through sixth grade. We feel like at the, at the completion of your second grade year, you're about ready to leave home for three nights and and it'd be a great experience and you've got the stamina to hang with with the bigger kids sometimes and enjoy that and it's a positive thing we want it to be a positive thing so some people ask why not first graders and you know we've just found over time that first graders might not quite be ready some may and some may not so we we do that for it completed second through six and honestly we take our kids there for fun but we take them to disciple them um, some kids are coming the, you know, and don't know Christ um, at all, or visitors or not churched. Some are from our church homes and some are from other church homes in our surrounding area. And Kurt, you may know the statistics a little better than I do on the percentage that come from our own church versus um, outside other places. But a lot of times um, it may range from a child who's already made a decision and just needs to grow and to a child who's never heard about Jesus at all. And so we go to have fun while doing that to learn about those things. Yeah, and I would say I'd probably say that probably more than fifty percent of the kids that have that come to camp with us are not members of our church, or you know, are, are most of them are, are either friends or are, are from our community.
community uh, around us. So I would agree. That's probably mm -hmm. true. Uh, and I guess to just follow up with that, how how did you know you, you mentioned discipleship and how uh, that's part of of our purpose for doing uh, kids camp? Uh, but how does how do we move uh, children along in their journey? Um, how does how does kids camp help in that process? Let's see, There's probably several things. I think you know first and foremost, kids camp allows. Um, children to see that you can learn and you can worship and you can love Jesus all while you're having fun, that it's not an, a one or the other, it's an all. And um, the style of camp that we run, you know, provides different avenues for teaching children. Children learn in different ways um, about Christ, um, whether it's praise and worship that reaches them or a message or a small group Bible study or even smaller group cabin devotions that are led by our youth leaders that they so look up to, um, you know, or if, as Brian, my husband would say, it's definitely through the recreational activities that we disciple children. That's questionable sometimes, but, you know, um, our campers get to observe servant leadership through our, our youth leaders um, that mentor and love on them, as well as our adult counselors. They, they get to hear about Christ and his love for us. And um, I don't know, for many of our campers, you know, camp is the beginning of their walk with Christ. Um, and for some of our youth leaders, it's the beginning of, or the next step of their walk in learning how to disciple children. So the whole discipleship process is kind of um, structured such that our adults are leading our youth and our youth are leading our children. And it's just a good example for um, the way Christ calls us to serve and and disciple others. Absolutely, yeah, I would echo that, and that it's uh, it's really, you know, not just the, not only the kids are getting discipled; it's mm -hmm. our youth yeah. and our adults are and are adults. in that process because uh, we know our the the journey doesn't end when you turn. 21 or you know 30 or 40 um it's gonna we're gonna be on that journey uh, for the remainder of our life as we as we seek to become like christ and so um it's a neat need to watch our, our adults grow our youth grow uh, in that process so <clears throat> and uh so <clears throat> yeah it's um it's an exciting time it's fun we do we do make it fun um because you know that's that's a an attractional thing and, and you know we, we want kids to understand that being a christian isn't <laughs> isn't checking off boxes or, or or you know doing things like that i mean it's it's a really a part of our life um and and whether we're competing against one another or uh we're, we're singing a, a worship song you know um that's all um, a lifestyle of of worshiping God and how we how we act and react and and all those things. So sure. it's such a unique a unique thing. Can I Ed, you look like you're wanting to add something. Could add something to that real quickly. Yeah, yeah. So Ellen kind of laughed about the recreation being a part of that, and yeah. and sometimes it being questionable. I will I will tell you from from experience that there are some kids that they are only reached through the rec. I believe it. Yeah, the Bible study and the worship and all that is powerful, but it's all a spoke in that wheel. It is every bit of it is a spoke in the wheel. And you never know what activity, what event, what conversation is going to spark that more intimate relationship with God. And I, so a, a camp, that is the essence of camp, folks. That's why we do camp. I had to chuckle because what was going through my head were some of the crazy outfits and, uh, you know, that was my yeah. chuckle, Ed, but I couldn't really. That agree. broke down barriers. Yeah. I mean, if I can yeah. see that guy who's who's an adult, you know, that's acting all crazy and he loves Jesus, well, man, I don't have to be stodgy and, and yeah. uptight. Man, I can be crazy and love Jesus too. I mean, that's, yeah. I'm telling you, that's powerful. Absolutely. We've seen it, seen that over and over. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it is powerful. <clears throat> um so let's ask this how can we be praying specifically for uh, pinnacle um yeah. right now what what are some things that that you need you know 
pray for well, it? How can we join you in that? We, we, uh, what we're seeing nationwide in our industry is that when groups still have their event, the vast majority of groups are at 50% of their reservation numbers. So they're going to have 100. They're now down to 50. Um, of course, that's not, that's not always, but that's the vast majority of groups around the country. So obviously, um, revenues take a huge hit. And it's not all about numbers. But if you don't have, if you don't have, um, um, well, there's a, there's a buddy of mine in the industry that says, if you don't have money, you, you can't operate the mission. I mean, he, he runs a conference center. He, he, he gets it. And that's where we are. Um, there's much needed repairs that need to occur. The, the pool is expensive. There are these things that happen. And it's hard to do that without, without budget dollars. We need guests. We need guests. I mean, that's, that's, that, that is it. At the same time, there are, there's a whole pamphlet, a booklet, I think it's 245 pages that um, the American Camping Association has put out of strong recommendations for facilities just like ours that we need to follow when we have groups like yours on campus. And well, that, that's, some of those things are pretty expensive. Some of those things are, you know, it's labor. There. So, so we need some wisdom on which of those strong recommendations that are not just practical, but are, but are realistic here in our environment versus other environments. Um, we need stamina for staff because right now there's two full-time year-round staff doing, doing everything. And um, so we need stamina. Um, so th those, those three areas, um, but I would say the number one is we need guests. We need people coming through the gates. We're, we're excited to be a part of bringing guests um, to you this, this summer. So we're And I can tell you, them. I can tell you straight up, 100% this is honest. There are some groups on the calendar that we, oh, all right, they're coming, all right. And then we're fine when they leave. When Fayetteville arrives, or we're getting ready for Fayetteville, all right, Fayetteville's coming. I mean, and then when y'all leave, it's a little sad. Oh no, they're they're gone. I mean, it's true. I'm not saying that because I'm just talking to you. I'm saying that because yeah. it's true. Your adults are great. Your students are great. Your 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 kids that attend. Are, I mean, we just we like serving your group. Thank you. Ed. That's a great compliment to our to our folks and i wouldn't um, say it to every group leader and i wouldn't say it to every group so <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just being open and honest about that yeah, appreciate that and we'll we'll join you in praying for guests for wisdom and for um stamina stamina yes yeah. yes endurance stamina yes um absolutely uh, ellen how can we how can we be in prayer for kids camp uh 2021 I think first and foremost, we need to be praying for the children that need to be there and for parents to feel comfortable to let them go, even amongst the last year that's been uncertain. We know God is certain and um, we're going to try to move forward with camp as in the most typical way we can with the most fun that we can while being safe. Um, and so I think it's important first to pray for the, the students that need to be here for those guests, Ed, you know, the ones that, that we need to bring that need to experience camp. Um, it's obvious that we need to pray for health and safety. Um, mm -hmm. We need to all use great discernment on how to, how to best make the modifications that are needed and keep things the same that we don't have to change. Um, people don't always adjust well to change me included, or, or maybe me at the top of the list, but um, I know it's going to be important to to be flexible and do what needs to happen, but we want to just have a good time and stay close to our mission for camp doing that and um, pray for the the planning that we'll use good discernment as we plan for those things. So um, ultimately, we want God to lead our path during that planning and for God to change lives. So that's ultimately the number one. Probably I could have started there, but um, that's those are the main things that we can pray for, for camp. I'm excited. Absolutely. And it is important to pray for those that are coming even now. Um, you know, we have five kids signed up for camp now, but you know, we need to be praying for those that, that God will prepare their hearts. Um, because, you know, part of the process is, um, before 
you know, a child receives uh, Christ uh, before they make that decision to follow him is that cultivation of the heart and making it ready to accept the gospel. And so um, I, I'm a big believer in that. Um, look up the, the parable of the sower. Um, you know, if the soil is not ready, um, it doesn't work very well uh, to receive the gospel. So be, be per, praying, praying for that. And, and also as we prepare wisdom um, for us, as we decide on, make decisions on how to keep our campers as safe as possible uh, while maximizing the fun, uh, maximizing the experience um, that they have um, in discipleship. And uh, so, well, uh, Ed and Ellen, I just want to say thank you again for joining me for uh, this month uh, for Journey on Conversations. And uh, thank you for all you do um, at Camp Pinnacle, uh, Pinnacle Retreat Center to, to provide um, a place uh, for people to come and experience God uh, in the in the best environment possible. And and Ellen, thank you for for leading uh, us in our kids camp and um, for all you do to prepare and and execute uh, camp. And um, right. remember, the journey is the destination. So journey on. Thank you, Kurt. Thanks, Kurt. Thank you.